got a cell phone, I might just ask you to either put it on silent or even better yet, turn it right off so they don't get any calls, right? In an unexpected moment. Also, if you're going to take a photo, just make sure you don't have a flash on your camera because you don't want to scare the wee man. All right? And lastly, when you're actually in there seeing the people, you can just keep your voices down. Right? It's got all that. Right. Good. All right, I'll repeat. No, right. I'm watching you. Keep my eyes on you. Now, we've got a long way to go. So now, if you want to follow me, you've got your backpacks and your scrogging and your tramping boots on. You might lose a few of you on the way, but that's okay. Right. See, I've been observing and watching and documenting the Kākāpō whale since the 19th century. Yeah, it's been quite a while. I think I'm due for a pay rise, frankly. Yeah, but back then, back then, by God, I tell you, there were so many Kākāpō, they were all over the place. Tell you what, in fact, some explorers at the time used to say that there were so many kākāpos that you could just go up to a tree, shake it, and the kākāpo would fall out like apples. Yeah, they were that common. They were all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> but today, well, you know as well as I do, there aren't so many, are there, we one? No? How many are there? There's only 124 left in the entire world. 124, eh? Imagine that. All the way from so many to 124. Well, to be honest, they didn't make it easy on themselves. I mean, for a start, they're the heaviest parrots in the world. Each one weighs between, I don't know, two, two to four kg each, and that's pretty heavy for a bird. Secondly, they've got wings, but they can't fly. I mean, that's just silly, really, isn't it? <laughs> Frankly. And thirdly, they're nocturnal, so obviously they only come out at night. But of course, that's when all the predators are out and about. Things like your, your feral cats and your stoats and your ferrets and your weasels. Oh, so they're really not making it easy on themselves. And then, of course, well, breeding time. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, they don't like to do it unless there are plenty of rimu berries around. And of course, rimu berries don't come into season very often, so that's one thing for a start. Secondly, typical. Yeah, when it comes to breeding. Well, the males, oh, oh. Well, they go at it, fighting each other, trying to figure out who's going to get the best breeding spot. Crikey. By the time they figure that out, then the one that wins gets to dig a little bowl in the ground in the position he likes, and he sits in it, makes himself comfortable, and he starts doing these loud booming noises. Boom, boom, boom. Like boy races. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell you. Probably something in that, I reckon. Boy races. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, yeah, thank you. You're with me. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, and you know, that booming noise can be heard 7k away. So it's not as though they're trying to hide from the predators. I suppose we didn't help things either. I mean, we used to hunt them for meat, for feathers, for decorations. There have been many times when I thought, oh, well, that's it. The kakapo, they're not going to make it. But Somehow they've managed to survive, yeah, despite being completely cleared out of the whole North Island. Eventually there were none left here at all, none whatsoever in the North Island. But they